Uh, this one's kind of just a jumping exercise. Mm, there's a, and there's some hidden stuff. There's a mushroom right here, which allows us to jump effectively down to this key. This keyhole, I guess it's supposed to be. Of course, how do we get out? Well, as I mentioned, they just don't do that sort of thing. So there's a mushroom in inside. Oop. Whatever, I'll deal with the... I will fail to deal with the cat later. Um... My memory is I jump from this hole. Yeah, because it's otherwise you die if you it's too low. So you have to start out low. There's a mushroom back here too. Which effectively allows us to get up here. That's, of course, not all of the keys. There are some along... So this level is, it looks at its surface like some Escher-ish, Escher-esque um, experience. I had to cut things back together and um, I didn't record the very initial exploration, but this is a level where you can't really see what you're trying to do. Um, there's two levels, there's, there's actually, it's called bi-level, but there's three actual levels of height that are relevant. There's this highest level where you jump around. There's a lower level where you're still jumping around and then there's a maze at the bottom. You start off in the upper left corner and um, there's pretty much only one way to go, but there's a lot of ways to die. Uh, almost everywhere that you might think to jump that is not the obvious correct way at the highest level tends to be death. The medium level that we'll be at soon um, is different in that it's very unobvious where, well, both where you can go and how you should best proceed. You have to apologize. I have to apologize because I'm actually recording this long after the play session because I had the microphone misconfigured and I lost all the audio. But um, that was an example of trying to get to... It looked like maybe you could get to where the cat was, but you cannot. And here's another way. It looks like maybe you can advance. You can go a long way in this direction to the lower right, uh, but you cannot actually get anywhere useful. So there's a lot of kind of... Um, d dead ends isn't the right term. There's these uh, unexpected... Um, ways that don't work out uh, like for example you can't jump forward there because there's nothing to land on although it's hard to see because the pillar's in the way so the way that you do need to go is to go to the upper left through in between these pillars and then uh, through this next set of pillars uh, the, theoretically, you could jump up to the upper left and go along the edge, but um, that's just another sort of red herring experience. The way that you do go forward is to jump through these, these set of pillars and to the stairway. Now, you've just gotten to another set of stairs. Is that progress? Well, probably. Um, 
from here, it's pretty easy to get to the next set of stairs. That was the, the, the big hurdle of getting to the second set of stairs is over. But there is still a gotcha from the level developer here. I guess this is all Joshua. Joshua Scholar? Joshua. I'll look, it's on the title screen. Hopefully you saw it. Um, I guess he made all the levels himself. Which is very different from the author of Loadrunner, who had lots of people helping him make levels. <clears throat> of course, Loadrunner shipped with like 150, so I don't think a single author is going to make 150 creative good levels themselves. So, we went over here to get this one key. The one key that we could see. Because if you go to the elevator early, you you will find that you have to backtrack the entire way to get this one key. And then there's this set of stairs I just went out and back. It's just a dead end, just to fool you, I guess. I don't know. That one isn't a very effective fooling. But overall, the, the level's very visually busy, and a lot of the busyness is misleading or uh, obfuscating. At this point, we're at a pretty traditional maze level. This is... Um, Traditional maze level. This is similar to the other maze, the, the first maze level we saw. Uh, we just have to go down all the dead ends and find all the keys. But it's still kind of a screw job because there's all this stuff in the way. Like, how could I, you know, jumping that guard is a real pain in the butt because I couldn't see the guard properly, I couldn't see myself properly. And. To a significant extent, you can't see what ways exist in the maze. Now, the game does have a little bump sound, so you can kind of fumble your way along and figure out which ways are dead ends and just sort of try the four cardinal directions repeatedly to see what's going on. But it's easy to misestimate what the potential paths are. And if you have trouble navigating mazes already, navigating mazes that you can't really reason about the overall shape of is, well, worse. Uh, there's a variety of restart points along the way, which is kind of it, because, uh, as I mentioned, running, you know, avoiding the guards is a little hard when you can't see them or yourself properly. So I think many players would have a couple deaths. So at least we've got restarts, we don't have to start all the way from the beginning. That would be cruel. And usually my worry around this point is, did I miss any keys? I start to wonder. There's four more, and hopefully I will find four more, because if I don't find four more, they are somewhere in this maze that I can't even visually inspect very well. Which would mean sort of just exploring the whole thing again. And this is where I got really worried, because there's three left, and I was pretty much out of maze. As it turns out, there are two more. Oh, but first, catch the cat. Well, fail to catch the cat, and eventually succeed. Still two left. I was pretty... I decided I'd screwed up at this point, but no. They're just both on the left at the end there. I give this one, like, out of 10 stars, maybe a 4. Like, I don't like it, but it's not awful. It has a variety of problems, but it's manageable. After that pretty, um, kind of, in some ways, unfair level, we get a pretty f fair level, or at least it ought to be. I managed it in this playthrough to screw up a lot, though. Uh, so, you cannot jump to the upper left without a mushroom, because it's, you know, a three jump. And there are these water squares that connect places. Uh, that one pushes us... Th that square doesn't allow us to go anywhere new if we enter from the bottom left. But from the top left, we'll see later at those places.
with the mushroom we can get over here and collect these keys and step on it. <laughs> From the upper left, the way that water square works is it pushes you to the lower right. So it's like a divider that you can't really tell it's a divider until you uh, play around in the water a fair bit and see what you can and cannot do. If I haven't made this clear, every water square effectively has a direction. They all have a way that they are pushing you. Oh, I don't even know what... Oh, I just got pushed up into the guard. So if the arrow... if the lines... This is embarrassing. If the lines on a water square... Uh, are going lower left to upper right. I guess you know it's pushing one of those two directions? Do you know which way? You might. I don't know though. And I think it's hard to see. Now with the mushroom we can jump over that waterfall. And the only question is how to get that last key in the corner there, in the nook. And I screw this up, I think, several times before figuring it out. You can't swim to it. I tried swimming to it, it doesn't work. Um. You could suicide to it by jumping down to it, but that's sort of... That's not the right... That's not reasonable. Or at least you cannot swim to it um, directly by walking down the stairs and then pushing upright. And you can't get there this way either. You may have figured it out long before I did. And that's not good enough. The right... I'm, I'm thinking in the right direction, but it's not enough. It turns out the water square to the upper, lower, le or lower right of it pushes you onto it. So all you have to do is jump in the right water square. And it... I've done a bunch of practice runs where I kind of just did everything painlessly and easily. And and then uh, I guess I just didn't follow the same pattern when I did this real one. And I had all this trouble uh, where I didn't really realize that there was just no way to get from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen without collecting a mushroom, going to the top left, and going to the top half of the top water square. I think eventually I remembered I can press A to warp to the, rest to the restart square. <laughs> Looks like I didn't remember. I just got there again. Oh, and died. I guess I got to the restart square by death. Overall, I could have edited out some of the failure, but I wanted to... I haven't really edited anything at this point in the run, and I, I don't know. I felt like showing I'm not really that great. I've just played this game a bunch and know mostly what I'm doing, but if I get confused, I can make lots of mistakes. This level is kind of a sort of looping structure uh, that's a little hard to read. Um, I accidentally stepped forward there, and here we get to see, is there any way out? And the answer is no, there's not any way out. You're supposed to press A to get out. Uh, so you can see some of the things have, there's some T's and there's, and there's some paths that cross each other with a hole. And obviously if you're jumping, you, you, know, you can't turn on a hole. So the main 
challenge here is like reading the map effectively to quickly move from key to key. You don't, of course, have to be efficient and fast at it, but the slower you are, the more the guard is going to find you and make your life difficult. Whereas if you are in the flow and um, efficiently are moving through this sort of strange loop, then the less likely you're to bother the, you're, the well there's a few things you're more likely to be ahead of the guard you're also um likely to have a lot more brain power to spare on thinking about jumping correctly and avoiding the guard correctly I finally get back into the groove and finish this mostly straightforwardly. I mean, I do have to deal with the guard a bit, but he takes paths that you cannot take, which is a little cheap. I guess you take paths he cannot take, so fair's fair. This is one of many of the castle levels. I think there's castle, Camelot, uh, towers. I don't know. That's the hidden. That's the hidden finish square right there. You cannot see it at all. Um, the completion spot for this level. But if you do fall in the water, you do tend to end up on it. So you tend to learn it exists. The embarrassing part about this one is forgetting how to get up onto the walls. And I do it wrong. I do it totally wrong. Yeah, that is not the right way. <laughs> because, of course, you jump over the last one. I don't know why I did it again. That's, that was the part that's really embarrassing. Anyway, whatever. Obviously, if you jump, you always want to go forward, too, unless there's something to stop you. And there's something to stop you there. So, And there's the hidden elevator. And if you weren't going to see the hidden elevator, there was that, like, R there to tempt you. It was like, there was something you could see that would lead you to it. The rest of this is pretty straightforward. It's, um, jump correctly on the walls and don't touch the guard. There I flubbed moving onto the wall again. might be simpler to jump down into the water, but something about those stairs calls to me. So, this level, as it's drawing in, you can see all the parts. This is the invisible maze. Uh, it's a maze where you can't see the level. You can see yourself, but uh, you can't see where you're allowed and not allowed to go. Um, as There's a tone that plays, and when the tone is high, it's at the point where it can be an intersection or a turn. So you can try to figure it out. I think it's dumb. So I use the feature where you can change the colors of the level. You just press, it's not like a cheat, it's like in the manual, press one to change this color, press two to change this color. I think it might be sort of intended to be like a puzzle in that way. I don't know, maybe the author thought we were supposed to do it quote unquote legitimately, or maybe he thought it was like, you could do it either way, I don't know. 
The game controls let you do this, so I skip it because it doesn't interest me. With memorization, it would be trivial. With non-memorization, it's tedious. Eh, I press the number keys. This is another um, sort of optical illusion isn't the right term. A level where things are not as they seem. Mostly the trick here is that it looks symmetrical and it is definitely not. Uh, I'll try to start out with the simple stuff. Um, the... Um, keys on the low ground for lack of a better word are more straightforward I take a while to corner this cat eventually I manage to coax it into a dead end there we go So now we can get these keys. There's a little step there. So let's get those three. The longer jump, let's just get the last one. The mushroom is useful for some other stuff on the low ground, but um, I don't think I use the low mushroom for it. There's some puzzles on the far right where a mushroom was useful and maybe I should have run over and did those. But first I get the easy ones that don't require anything. And now it is time. Come on, when are you gonna be done checking that? I was looking for I was looking for steps. There is a step on the top, but you couldn't jump to anything with that, with that uh, I think it's just a step down. There I am demonstrating you can't use it. Okay, so now we go up the giant pogo stick uh, climb. Some of those are leaps of faith, like like that. That was a leap of faith that didn't work out. The level is actually designed so those leaps of faith that it expect you to do, like this one, work out. Um, like you, you might think that you could jump from the top of that uh, climb, but uh, you can see there's no black line between those two points. And that means they're diagonally adjacent, so you can't jump from one to the other. Whereas on the right, it's a little less clear what exactly the relationship is, but they're not diagonally adjacent, so the jump does work. So there's like those tiny little clues that give you some sense of how the perspective works. But uh, it's pretty loose. Now here if you jump down onto that mushroom without a mushroom, you would die because it's a three drop. But there's a mushroom, so you don't die. Uh, for the most part, uh, once you kind of realize you can make those jumps from pole to pole with the mushroom. The middle section is pretty uh, obvious. But the key on the right is acquired uh, totally differently from the key on the left. Or maybe not totally differently, but differently. It's not symmetrical again. I think both of them are acquired by falling in some water that you cannot see. That was a half-hearted attempt to start solving the right-hand low puzzles and realizing I was out of mushroom and panicking. That was a check. Is there a hidden mushroom for convenience? Answer, no. 
So there's how to get this key on the right. <laughs> Jumping down to the the water is sort of probably the safest way out. But I don't even really understand that layout because I was on some water and then I was seeing it was behind the wall and then I jumped to the lower right and I landed on the I don't know whatever. Here I still fail to get back here with the mushroom fast enough. So one more time. And of course, these are two jumps instead of three jumps. So, gotta wait for it to fall off. And now we're done with clowning around. I don't really know why clowning around is called that, but maybe it's all the jumping. This is um, another one of my kind of low-rated levels. Uh, it doesn't feel um, unfair or mean the way that my level kind of does. Although they're... they're but um, it is a little ridiculous. Uh, the reason it's ridiculous, which you'll see soon enough, is that there are many... So it's shoot and ladder. Well. If it's single ladder, I think this is the ladder. Shoot, of course, are like shoots and ladders, things that send you downwards. In this game, that's those droopy spots, the things that sink when you stand on them. And the reason I'm jumping like crazy is for sort of two parts. One of them is, as earlier, uh, if you're only landing on half the spots, you're less likely to land on the wrong spot. So 50% chance is no guarantee. But it also makes it easier to remember how to avoid them. Like, I know it's a step forward here. And then if I jump, I'll make it again forward. So I think it's like forward, 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 not forward. Then, I don't remember. I think it's two more forwards and maybe... Mostly it's not from the first spot, but rather the second. That time I was busy thinking about the guard and forgot what it was and just panicked and ran a bit. Here there's actually no shoot on this strip, but I tend to forget and jump anyway. We'll see. There's no shoot there at all. Or no droopy spot. And then, of course, you have the kind of annoyance of having to find them again when you're like, we're trying to avoid them the whole time. 